Come on in. I I've been expecting you. Uh, my name is Professor Greg. Professor Greg, and welcome to Children of the World. Well, I've got a souvenir to show you. Let me get it for you, okay? It's in this black bag right here. Let's see, this is oh, it's personal. It's, it's a book bag. So you got the lat here. You got, it's from Austria. It's in a box, but not like this one, I don't think. Or nor this one. I don't think there's slippers. In I'm painting my garage lately. I got a plate. <laughs> this is from Russia. <laughs> hey, I know it's in here somewhere. That's for later, and so is that. Okay, you know, I gotta finish my term paper. Okay, and I uh, sent that already. <laughs> oh, here's what I was looking for. The souvenir's right inside of this box. Can you see what's inside there, huh? Let me get them out and show them to you. Can you guess what these are, huh? Go ahead, guess. Should I help you pick your brain for the answer? <laughs> well, that's exactly what these are for. My friend James, he's from Fiji, which is the place that we're going to be visiting today, told me that they had cannibals at one time. But he says they don't have them anymore. Well, let me show you where Fiji is. Fiji is located east of Australia and north of New Zealand. <laughs> Come on in. I I've been expecting you. Uh, my name is Professor Greg. Professor Greg. And welcome to Children of the World. Well, I've got a souvenir to show you. Let me get it for you, okay? It's in this black bag right here. Let's see. This is... Oh, it's personal. It's, it's a book bag. It's, it's, it's got the lat here. You got, it's from Austria. It's, it's in a box, but not like this one, I don't think. Or, nor this one. I don't think there's slippers in there. I'm painting my garage lately. I got a plate. <laughs> this is from Russia. <laughs> hey, I know it's in here somewhere. That's for later, and so is that. Okay, you know, I gotta finish my term paper. Okay, and I uh, sent that already. <laughs> oh, here's what I was looking for. The souvenir's right inside of this box. Can you see what's inside there, huh? Let me get them out and show them to you. Can you guess what these are, huh? Go ahead, guess. Should I help you pick your brain for the answer? <laughs> well, that's exactly what these are for. My friend James, he's from Fiji, which is the place that we're going to be visiting today, told me that they had cannibals at one time. But he says they don't have them anymore. Well, let me show you where Fiji is. Fiji is located east of Australia and north of New Zealand in the Southern Pacific Ocean. Fiji is composed of more than 300 islands. Well. James lives there, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about it. So why don't we go and visit James, okay? Bula. My name is Tessan Barravila. I, I go to school at St. Peter Chanel. I live at Namamogua village. I am 12 years old. In Fiji, Bula means hello and goodbye. Now, James lives in a village next to the big ocean, where his people, the Fijians, live off the land. Every child in the village must learn to use the land for farming and the ocean for fishing. That is their tradition. Now, let's follow James through one of his daily routines. Cassava, which is the most important root used for food, tastes a lot like potatoes. Usually one root is enough to feed a family for a day. 
and James' father has taught him how to plant cassava. First, James pulls out one or two plants. He usually takes a friend with him. It's funner that way. Then they collect the roots into a basket that his father has made from the leaves of a coconut tree. James's father has taught him to plant at least one new cassava every day of the week. James mulches, or breaks up the soil, with a pitchfork. Then his father cuts the stem of the cassava plant into short pieces that the children plant into the earth. After nine months, the new cassavas are big enough for food. And because James has learned to plant one cassava each day, his family will always have food on the table. We also teach this, the, the children uh, many ways of uh, doing things that they will uh, make them, uh, to enable them to uh, earn some money. So we teach them how to do that, like basket weaving, Hat weaving, uh, we're now starting to teach them how to build uh, houses, the old bores that we used to live on before. Uh, I know they, they wanted to go for the new, new kind of building, to live on new houses or new furniture, but still we're trying to encourage them to learn the old ways of building the, the uh, authentic Fijian bore. Doesn't James look cool in his new hat? And look at these Fijian houses called bures. They have lasted decades without damage through many storms and hurricanes. Seafood is also an important source for food and James loves going fishing in the warm ocean waters. He often uses a spear and he's very good at catching fish. Sometimes James has caught even barracudas and small sharks. Fijian people say that man-eating sharks never bother them. Well, I hope they're right. <laughs> Didn't I tell you? What a shot! Even though English is the official language of Fiji, James's mother tongue is Fijian. Listen to James telling about his village in Fijian. <laughs> A chief is the head of the Nadulava tribe. About 200 people live in Namagwana village. People live in a community. They help each other and work together for the benefit of the whole village. In the everyday life of the village, children have their own tasks to perform. They collect firewood, fruit, and sometimes tree leaves for the skirts that are used for performing meke, the traditional Fijian dance. The tropical climate of the Fiji Islands is great for growing all sorts of fruits, roots, and vegetables, and it is mostly the children's task to collect and clean them. <laughs> the girls help prepare dinner by cooking taro vegetables, which is a tropical plant that is very common in Fiji. Both the leaves and the starchy root of the plant are used for food. Most of the time, food is cooked outdoors with several families sharing one fire. Even small children are allowed to participate. That way, they learn as they play. I'm sure this is going to be a kettle full of vitamins and minerals. The boys have been taught by their fathers how to husk coconuts that grow in the tall, tropical palm trees. Then, they break the coconut shells and, when you know where to hit, Everything is easy. After that, the girls grate the coconuts by rasping them against the hard and sharp-edged seashells. Only ripe coconuts with brown outer surfaces are used. The liquid inside has become solid and oily to form the white coconut meat, which the girls squeeze out and use the rich coconut milk for cooking. The central yard of the village is a common place for children's games and playing. Fijians are champion rugby players who often win the international competitions. Who knows, one day these children could be the members of a winning rugby team. Sometimes the children play Pani, a typical Fijian outdoor game where a stack of coconut shells is placed in the middle of the yard and the boys try to keep the girls from stacking the shells after they have been knocked down with a tennis ball. 
When a girl is hit with a ball, she is out of the game. But if the girls are able to stack the shells, they win and shout, Pony! This evening will be a special children's Mecca night at the nearby resort. Mecca is a traditional performance of dancing, singing, and storytelling. The dresses that the girls made from the leaves of the Fijian plants are now ready, and the evening may begin. Oh, did you like the children's mecca there? <laughs> well, James is going to show you one of his favorite bands coming up pretty soon. And later, you'll get to see people who can walk on fire. Oh, <laughs> so stick around, okay? <laughs> la, 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 la. Before you see James's band, we're going to have to attend to our study. We're going to school. Sorry, business before pleasure. Here we go. Children in Fiji start school when they are five or six years old, and tuition is free for first through eighth grades. At first, classes are taught in children's native languages, but after a few years, all classes are taught only in English. Sports is an important part of the education, and besides normal classroom studies, the school children have several duties of their own. They are even taught how to keep their school clean. When James grows up, one of his dreams is to become an entertainer and work in a hotel or a resort. This band is performing a traditional song at the Castaway Island Resort, one of the many resorts in Fiji. Out of hundreds of Fijian islands, only 105 are inhabited. Many are still owned by the original Fiji tribes, who then leased the land to the hotel owners. Castaway is one of those islands, located a couple of hours boat ride from the main island, Viti Levu. <laughs> Fiji has a tropical climate, and the white beaches are endless. The so-called winter begins in July, and then the usually even and warm temperature may drop a few degrees. In tourist resorts, all kinds of activities are offered, and if you wish to move from one island to another quickly, a small airplane can take you there in a flash. <laughs> The 
The population of the Fiji Islands is approximately 780,000, and their capital is Suva. Located on the west coast of the largest island, Fiji Levu, Suva is home for about 80,000 people. They are Fijians, Indians, Europeans, Chinese, and other South Pacific Islanders. You'll notice the contrast of cultures as you stroll the busy streets of Suva. The Fiji Visitors Bureau, with offices both in Suva and the only international airport town, Nandi, gives help and excellent service to foreigners. Tourism provides one of the most important income for the people of Fiji. And here she is, another Fijian child, Ellen. Bula, my name is Ellen Moses. I live, at, I live in Suva, Fiji, and I'm 14 years of age. I don't have any brothers and sisters. I school at Holy Trinity Anglican School. I'm in class 8T, and my teacher's name is Mrs. Tuitumbo. She takes me for English and uh, general subjects. And I also have another teacher, Master Dama, he takes me for maths and our principal takes us for basic science. I don't really like going to school but just because of my friends and that some of the subjects that the teachers teach are very interesting, that's why it makes me want to go to school. When I grow up I'd like to be a doctor uh, so that I could be helping sick people and maybe saving somebody's life one day. Ellen has already learned enough to understand the teacher's instructions in Fiji's official language, English. However, at home, the families of these children speak mostly their own languages, whether it is Fijian, Hindi, Urdu, Tamil, or Chinese. When the first inhabitants of Fiji arrived 3,500 years ago, they brought with them the language of their various homelands. This is the national anthem of Fiji. being a British colony for nearly a century, the Republic of Fiji became an independent country in 1970. Native Fijians represent less than half of the total population. The rest is mostly Indians, descended from the field workers brought from India by the British. One day, Ellen's studies will continue in the University of the South Pacific, the only university in Fiji. After school, Ellen goes shopping at the marketplace of Suva, where vendors sell fruit, vegetables, spices, coconut oil, fish, and nearly everything that a Fijian household might need. Things sold in the local markets are not measured by the pound or kilo, but by the heap or the bunch. At home, Ellen helps her mother to prepare dinner. She peels the green papayas and then she cuts them into small pieces. Or she helps her mother by ironing the freshly washed clothes. Sometimes, Ellen takes her visitors to the cultural center, where Fijian men and women demonstrate ancient rituals and craft making. The tour begins with the haunting sound of a conch shell trumpet, perhaps to announce to the gods the arrival of the visitors. You really don't have to walk on that tour, but sit back and relax in a gondola-style boat pushed around by mighty warriors. The boat 
makes ten brief stops where the guests observe demonstrations of old-time crafts such as mat weaving, pottery making, or wood carving. Only products of nature are used, leaves or skin of trees and other plants, and natural colors from the earth. All the artisans use homemade tools like stone adzes and coarse brain coral to scrape out logs. And look at this warrior! He is making fire the old, old way by rubbing two pieces of wood against each other. Can you see the smoke coming? Now he pours the hot wood dust into this bowl, adds some thin wood shavings, blows a little, And there we are! Fire! He did it! As the boat completes its tour, it passes a couple of authentic warriors, and finally the chief's home, which is studded with vicious-looking wooden spikes to keep out uninvited visitors. Of course, there is always another warrior on guard. Let's hope that he doesn't mind us passing. I think we are safe. Did you think those wooden spikes looked dangerous? Well soon, you're gonna see something that looks even more dangerous. I'm talking about fire walkers. People who walk on red hot stones. Let's go see those fire walkers. The Fire Walking Show is something that all of Ellen's friends want to see. I hope you won't get cold feet, <laughs> but we'll stick around to see the show as well. After hours of burning wood under a pile of stones, the brave Fijian warriors are ready to walk on those fiery hot stones. Look at that! He's walking on the hot stones! Oh. How do they do that? According to a legend, firewalking began when a warrior caught an eel which transformed itself into a spirit god. In exchange for his freedom, the spirit god offered the warrior the gift of immunity to fire. To prove his words, the spirit god built a fire pit, leaped onto the white hot stones, and commanded the warrior to follow. The warrior did so, and walked over the fiery stones unharmed. In return, the warrior let the eel go, and today the members of that one tribe, descendants of that man, are able to walk with their bare feet on the burning hot stones. <laughs> now children, remember that according to the legend, only these men can do it, so please, don't try this at home. Back at home, where the ground is definitely cooler, Ellen likes to play with her cousin. Ellen's mother taught them the stick game that she had learned from her mother. All you need is two players and a stick. Come on! Yes, that's a good one! Hmm, I wonder who's winning. Now, let's go back to the village. Traditions are important for Fijians, whether living in a city, or in a village. Drinking kava symbolizes welcome and is an expression of hospitality and friendship. This muddy looking drink, kava, is made from powdered pepper plant roots blended with water. After drinking several bowls of the non-alcoholic beverage, it makes the tongue and lips get somewhat numb. Children don't drink kava, but they often help their parents make it, and they can always watch the adults performing their traditional and polite kava ceremonies. The clapping of hands is a part of the ceremony. Three claps mean thank you. Ah! 
children of Fiji have always been a very important part of the country's culture. At an early age, they are taught to respect their elders and the people's ancient customs. By doing so, the Fijians have been able to preserve their dearest inheritance and culture from outside influence for centuries. Wasn't that interesting? Well, I promise that every place that we visit and every child that we meet will be just as fascinating. So, until next time, this is Professor Greg, Professor Greg saying, Bula!